In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve rational equations. So working with a rational equation is actually similar to working with a rational expression. Now, one major difference is that you're going to be solving for the variable in a rational equation. But in a rational expression, you are going to be simplifying the expression. Now, you can tell the difference because one will have no equal sign, like in this first expression here, whereas the second one will have the equal sign, which means that you have to solve. So when you're simplifying, you're going to combine the two fractions together uh, to make it to be a simpler expression. But when you're solving a rational expression, you actually want to find the variable. So in this case, we'll be finding m. So we'll come back to take a look at these two expressions after. So to solve a rational equation, and the first step, similar to simplifying, is you need to factor each denominator. And the reason that we're doing this is to find the LCD. So I'm going to add this part on to find the lowest common denominator. Second, identify the non-permissible values. And you do this by looking in the denominator. All right, now the third step is where it is different from um, simplifying a rational expression. So for rational expressions, we would be multiplying the top and bottom so that we can combine the numerators, sorry, the denominators together. However, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we will cancel off the denominator. So this will, cancel off the denominator. All right, and then fourth, we're going to solve by isolating the variable to one side of the equation, uh, similar to uh, the techniques that you've learned in previous grades. And then always check your answer, and if your answer happens to be a non-permissible value, then actually it's going to be no solution for that value. All right, so let's take a look at some questions here. So uh, let's take a look at the first one. So I'm asking you to solve. Um, it says to factor. We can't factor because it's already just one variable here. Uh, the non-permissible value is that y cannot equal 0. So write that down. Uh, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. So we should also identify the LCD here. And the LCD here is equal to y. Uh, we're going to multiply both sides by the y, and then this will cancel off the denominator. Now I do notice that I can combine the 1 with the 4, so I'm going to do that first. So I have one less thing to multiply, or one less term. So now I'm going to multiply the left side and the right side by y, and when I do this, the y's will cancel off. So I'm going to be left with 3 equals 3 times y, Divide both sides by 3 to isolate the y, and y is equal to 1. And this, we're going to check your answer. So to check, we're going to plug the value in that we just got. So we're going to go 3 divided by 1 plus 1 equals 4. So I'm putting 1 back into this y value here. 3 divided by 1 is 3 plus 1. So the left side is equal to the right side. So y equals 1 is great, and that is one of our solutions. All right, let's take a look at um, another question here. So here we have 4, and then divided by x plus 1, and equals to 2 over x minus 1. So in this case, our non-permissible values are plus 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to combine them together. My LCD is x plus 1 from the first denominator and x minus 1 from the second denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by this expression. Okay. Now this gets a little bit messy, but it's good to multiply them out and to write it down so that we can see that these x plus 1s will cross off these x minus 1s will cross off. And then my result is I have 4 times x minus 1 equals 2 
times x plus 1. Now this might look familiar and some people have called this to be cross multiplying. Notice that it's 4 times the x minus 1 in the denominator and then 2 times the x plus 1 in the other denominator. And the reason that it's cross multiplying is actually because when we multiply by the LCD, the common one of the common uh, denominators will cancel off, which is from the other side. All right, so we're going to distribute the 4 to get 4x minus 4 equals. We're going to distribute the 2, so we get 2x plus 2 on the right. And we're going to combine our like terms. So move the 2x to the left. And I like to move the negative 4 to the right by adding 4. And we get 6, so x equals 3. And when you check this, it does work. So we get 4 over 3 plus 1 equals 2 over 3 minus 1. 4 over 4 is 1. And then on the right side, we get 2 over 2, which also equals 1. So this is good. So x equals 3 is my solution. All right, let's take a look at a couple of other questions. All right, so this one here, uh, let's take a look at E. And we have a non-permissible value. X can't equal 4, and both of them are the same. My LCD, I only have one denominator, and that is x minus 4. All right, so now I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 4. So when I do this, I'm going to put this in big brackets because I actually have two terms here. I have the 5 divided by x minus 4, and I have a plus 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this by x minus 4. On the other side, I will also, also, also multiply by x minus 4. Now on the left, what happens is I need to distribute the x minus 4 to both of these terms. So what you might like to do better is I'm going to get rid of these big brackets here. And I'm going to say they're going to multiply x minus 4 by every term on the left side. So I'm going to multiply this. And when I distribute the x minus 4 to the 2, it means that I'm also multiplying the 2 by the x minus 4. So the x minus 4 cancels off with the first term, leaving me with 5x. In the second term, it does not cancel off because the 2 doesn't have a denominator except for a denominator of 1. So we have plus 2 times x minus 4 equals, on the right side, the x minus 4s cancel off, and I have 3x plus 8. So the goal is really to try to get rid of the denominator because it makes it a lot easier uh, to solve the equation. So I'm going to expand uh, by distributing my 2. So I get 2x and then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Let's combine all my terms on one side. So 5x plus 2x is 7x minus 3. Actually I'll do this in two steps to show you every step. You can do it in one if you like. So this will be 4x on the left, add 8 to both sides, and I get 16. And then divide by 4 both sides, and then x equals 4. However, remember at the beginning I said that my uh, non-permissible value was that x can't equal 4. Now I have x equals 4. Well, that doesn't make sense. So what we say is that there is no solution. And what we call this answer is we say that this is an extraneous root. So it is not a solution, it doesn't work, and there's no solution to this question. All right, lastly, um, let's take a look at the one beside it here. Um, so we have x minus 8, x plus 2. Now this is the first one where we actually have to factor. There's no way that I want to um, use an LCD of x minus 8 x plus 2 and this big trinomial here x squared minus 6x minus 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor first. Let's rewrite everything else out first. And this factors to be x minus 8 and x plus 2. 
So that's great actually because now I can see that this denominator on the right side actually contains factors of the left hand side. Okay, so my non permissible values are that x cannot equal 8 and negative 2. And my LCD, so looking at my first denominator, I need an x minus 8. Looking at my second denominator, I need an x plus 2. And then when I look at my third denominator, I need x minus 8 and x plus 2, but I already have those written down as my LCD. So that's it. I don't need any more. All right. So like before, we're going to multiply every term by the LCD. Now, remember when I did that on the left side, I can put big brackets and x minus 8 and x plus 2 will be multiplied to the left side. But remember that what I'm doing is actually taking this expression and I need to distribute it to the first term and also the second term. So to make it look a little bit nicer, what I'm going to do is close the bracket here, close the bracket here, and then I'm going to write the second term with its own set of LCD. So I'm going to write x minus 8 and x plus 2. And then for this factor on the right side, I'm also going to multiply by x minus 8 and x plus 2. So you'll see that it actually need quite a bit of space here. Now it looks really messy and very complicated, but great things happen. So we can see that the x minus 8 crosses off here. So I'm going to be left with x plus 1 and x plus 2. In the second term, the x plus 2's cross off, which is nice. So I have 2x plus 1 and x minus 8. And that equals, and on the right side, notice that both the x minus 8 and the x plus 2 crosses off, and we get negative 7. So this is great and fantastic because now we don't have the denominator. We don't have to worry about any fraction questions here. So I'm going to FOIL um, and distribute um, my left side. So I'm going to simplify. So I get x squared plus 3x plus 2 plus 2x squared negative 16 plus 1. So that's negative 15x minus 8 equals negative 7. Let's combine all our like terms on the left side and also move the negative 7 over. So here I get 3x squared minus 12x and then 2 minus 8 is negative 6 but then I'm going to add the 7 back I get plus 1 that equals 0. All right doesn't look like I can factor because when I multiply the 3 times 1 there's no way for me to find some numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 12. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula and we have x is equal to negative b so it's going to be negative negative 12 plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 a and c all divided by 2 times 3 so if you need your calculator take it out and calculate what's inside here and you'll find that it's 132 all divided by 6 and we can actually simplify the square root of 132 because I can see that 4 goes into 132 since 4 goes into 32 which is the last two digits so this becomes 2 root 33 all divided by 6. Now in order for us to simplify this um, complex expression or this radical expression we need to make, see if all of these numbers can be divisible by a common number and they can all be divided by 2. So when we do that, I get 6 plus or minus root 33 divided by 3. Okay, so I divided all of these numbers that I circle in red by 2. Now I check again here. I cannot simplify the root 33 with the 3 because the radical number cannot be divided by a number that's not inside the radical. And then that's it. So my non-permissible values were 8 and negative 2, and that's not the solution I have here. Therefore, my solution is 6 plus or minus root 33 over 3. And that's it.